I'm Cigar Sharper Laird Mayhew, and today I'm going to start a fight. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back to another installment on the Cigar Sherpa how-to uh, video series, I guess you want to call them. So I'm not going to be reviewing a cigar today, but I am smoking the La Gloria Cubana Wavel Maduro. Now, this is the classic blend, I think is what it's marketed under now. And I think they just went un underwent a design change. So this is one of my personal favorite cigars. I smoke it every day between this and the, the natural wrapper which is a little bit more uh spicy all right this is this has got that um connecticut broadleaf that is very very smooth it's a great cigar you should try it out not going to review it today i'm going to be debunking cigar myths that's right i'm going to start a fight me and donald here got the gloves on we're taking them off <laughs> yeah so anyway uh, I just wanted to go over some cigar myths. Maybe they're not myths. Maybe they're just misconceptions. Uh, it's things that get cigar smokers into arguments. You're going to talk about religion. You won't talk about politics. Or whatever it is going to be, there's going to be differences of opinions. Uh, and, and in the cigar world, you got the same thing. There are some things that are just plain out wrong. Um, they're just myth, romance. Uh, and uh, some is just a matter of opinion, but we're going to go over them all. And I don't have like a top 10 or top 9. I'm just kind of spinning off the cuff. Um, so I'll just start with the first one that comes to mind that I have written down here. And that is that a dark cigar wrapper or a dark wrapped cigar is going to be a strong cigar. That's just not true. Okay. Now, there is a difference when people say full body and they say full strength. Okay, strength is going to apply to the the nicotine, the power, the strength of the tobacco of the cigar. Um, it, it's going to give it. Okay, so a dark wrapper is going to give it more flavor. It's going to be more bold flavors, maybe more um, hearty flavors. They're going to just going to be a little bit more bold and and uh, 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 damn, there's a word that's slipping my mind right now, but it'll come to me. Um, basically, if you look at cigars like you would beer. Okay, so if you take, say, and I'm going to use the beers that I know and drink because I ain't a big beer guy. You take a Miller Lite, okay? A Miller Lite is a little bit darker than, say, a Bud Light, okay? It's just a little darker. It's got a little bit more depth and flavor. Um, a little more hoppy, I guess, would be the word for it. But the alcohol content is only 3.5% alcohol. Okay, Yingling's better, better, better would be Yingling because you got that dark beer, it's full flavored, it's pretty stout, and it's a 3.5% alcohol by volume. Then you go over to the aisle with the IPAs, you know, the pinky, holding the pinky in the air and sipping it through their nose type of beer drinkers, and you get you like a pale Pilsner. Real light beer, real see-through, almost Corona, very light beer, very light in flavor, alcohol content going to be, you know, five, six percent. See what I'm saying? So full bodied cigar, full strength cigar, two different things. The dark wrapper does not mean you're going to be at full strength. Now this one, it's a full bodied cigar and it's a close to full strength cigar. And when you put the, uh, the lighter wrapper on there, which I believe is an Ecuador Sumatran wrapper, the, the, the natural shade wrapper is actually a little bit more strong than this. So there you go. Just because the cigar has got a dark wrapper doesn't mean it's going to be a strong cigar. It's going to have more bold flavors, more robust flavors. That's the word I was looking for, and it just came to me. Okay. Um, there's another one. I get this question all the time. Storing your cigars in the refrigerator. That's a big no-no. Don't do it. It does not keep them fresh. We ain't smoking cigarettes here. There's no preservatives in this that you got to keep fresh or whatever. You don't want to do it. Number one reason why you don't want to do it is the fact that a refrigerator does not humidify. It dehumidifies things. And if you don't believe me, put you some rice in there. Tonight's rice or mashed potatoes or chicken or meatloaf, whatever it is you eat, put it in the refrigerator uncovered with saran wrap or Tupperware. Come back the next morning, the next day, and see how dry it gets because the moisture is going to get sucked right out of that stuff. That's what's going to happen to your cigars, even if it's in cellophane. Cellophane does breathe, so you're going to ruin your cigars. On top of that, it's too damn cold. We keep our cigars at like 65 to 72 degrees, you know, in there. You want to keep it there all the time. You don't want it in there, whatever. Refrigerator's just too damn cold. So you cannot store your cigars in the refrigerator, okay? You can, but you're going to ruin them. 
And you might as well get you some Tampa Nuggets or some Phillies. Okay. Now, let's really start a fight. Aging cigars. Okay. Do you have to order cigars, go to the store, the tobacco industry, brick and mortars, buy cigars, bring them home and let them sit in your humidor for weeks, months, or years before they're any good? That's bullshit. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. You got men like E.P. Carrillo, uh, uh, A.J. Fernandez, Tom Pippen Garcia, uh, you've got uh, uh, Rafael Naldal, you got Nick Melillo, you've got uh, uh, Nick Herrera. I mean, I could go on and on. you got guys, Oscar Valderas. This is what they do. This is their passion. They've grown up doing it. They're just into it. They study tobacco. They blend and they do everything. They make all the cigars that we love, right? So they're the freaking expert, okay? So when they blend a cigar, okay, they take fermented leaves. They know how long that leaf's been fermenting. They don't owe that leaf. When they take those leaves and they put them together and they roll them into a cigar and they put them into their vaults and they let them age for however long they determine, when they box that thing up and they send it to me, it is ready to smoke according to how they um, planned it. Okay? Who the hell are you or me to say, yeah, thanks for that F55 aging room? Uh, Quattro Raphael, thanks for, you know, I got it from here, okay? You did an okay job, I got it from here. I'm going to go ahead and put them in my humidor for a year, and then they're going to be better. Bullcrap, okay? That's my opinion on it, all right? Now, aging the cigar is not going to hurt it, all right? It's going to, it's, it's, you may like it better with time. It's just going to get more mellow. Uh, if you keep it in there too long, you know, cigars, I've, I've done it on accident. You know, you get cigars, you get a box of cigars, you know, there's one or two make it to the bottom of the humidor, and three years later you pull it out, and you're like, I don't remember it being this light and smooth, but, you know, it, you can age the cigar right out of flavor, in my opinion. Now, when do you want to age your cigars, okay? I don't know. You know, maybe if you buy some bundles, if you get some of those, like, Segundos or... Not the Fumas, but the Long Filler, and they're good cigars. I mean, I, there are some bundle cigars out there that I really enjoy. Um, you know, they're most of the time they're made, and like they, every factory has like a, a rolling school. Okay, so you got They got to teach people how to do it. Okay, and then they move on down to the floor and they start their way up from there. Well, they got to do something with those cigars. They ain't just gonna throw them away. Okay, they call them factory seconds, but really it's from the cigar school that's in every factory. Okay, so. They're going to take all these cigars and they're going to bundle them up. They're just going to send them right out, okay? They're not going to be aged. They're going to be young. That's why you get a bundle cigar. You know, they're all kind of the same, but one might be good. And you're like, oh, I'm buying the whole bundle. And then you get five or six that are just like, they don't taste the same because they weren't aged. Age those. If you've got the proper, you know, storing conditions and you want to put them to sleep for a while, by all means, you, you know, that's when you want to do it. Another tip is if you get Cuban cigars, okay, um, I like Cuban cigars. I am I'm a fan of them, okay? I don't think they're the best cigars, and I'm going to cover that in my next, uh, right here on the list. But when I do get Cuban cigars, uh, they, Cuban cigars is a state-run enterprise, okay? Good enough for government work. Anybody here work for the government? Know anybody work for the government? Okay? Good enough for government work is, is universal, okay? That applies worldwide, okay? So these people, you know, they don't... Yeah, they might take pride, and I'm not going to take any way, anything away from them, but they're under the gun by the government that has to meet this nut every month. They've got the man. they got to meet up. they got to meet it, you know? So they roll these cigars. They might put them to rest for a couple of weeks, and then boom, they box them up, and they send them out, okay? They don't care because dumbasses in the United States are going to buy them just because they're Cuban, you know? They, I mean, it's $6 billion a year in fake Cohibas. Someone's buying them, right? So they figure, what do they got to lose? Maybe. I don't know. I don't speak for S.A. Havana, but I do speak for myself. And when I buy Cuban cigars, I like to buy them with the intention of, yeah, I'm smoking a few right away. Okay, I know it. And I'm going to expect it to be a little green, construction to be a little off. But for the most part, the rest of those cigars, they're going to go into my aging humidor. And I'm going to leave them in there. And they're going to stay in there for years because I ain't got the money. As a matter of fact, I just got me a box of um, Talisman. A box of 10 was like 500 bucks. That's $50 a cigar. You think I'm going to pull that thing out every day? No, I'm going to have them cigars for, for years to come. So they really do need some age. Okay, now the Talisman apparently doesn't need to be aged. And I got tongue lashed by somebody giving this, the same phraseology or mindset that I was giving you at first. Like it's already aged. It's already... But 
it did taste a little green. I smoked one. It was a good cigar. Okay. I know. I know. You're just a fanboy. I'm not a fanboy. I, I do like the Cohiba line when they're done properly. Okay. So there you go. Age your cheap cigars, but don't try to take over for AJ Fernandez when he says that cigar is ready to go. Smoke that bad boy. Okay. And on that, uh, the, in line with that same subject, the, you know, when you order cigars or someone sends you cigars or you go to the humidor and you bomb and maybe you're in the car for an hour and you get home, that cigar don't have to rest for no damn week. Okay, they're not that sensitive. Yes, you can leave it out in the hot, dry sun. It'll dry out. But, man, you go down to South America, and they got cigars. They keep, and these are the people that, that know cigars and they roll cigars. They don't roll them in humidors. They don't store, you know, they store them in humidors. When they box them and everything, it's open air. Now, granted, it is usually about 75, 80% humidity down there, and it's normally about 70, 80 degrees. But they're not, you know, this, ah, people, some people, I, I, I see it on the internet all the time, and I'm just like, oh, my. God, like you just ordered those cigars on Saturday. They showed up on Monday and now you think you've got to let them rest for two weeks. You can. It's your cigar. Do what you want, but you don't have to. And don't go telling people like they don't know what they're talking about because they're smoking them right out of the damn box when they buy them. Hang on. Put me off. Oh, so Cuban cigars. Are they the best cigars? Come on. Come on, man. If you have not smoked any Cuban cigars, man, try your best to get your hands on some, okay? So you can be let down like everybody else, okay? Yes, they're good cigars, and I do enjoy them. I don't like them all. I don't like them all. I'm not. I'm smoking a Monte Cristo number two the other day. Took a picture of it, posted it. You know, that's what I do on uh, International Cigar Smokers. I got friends on there. It is kind of cool to have it. But that cigar ain't that good. It's very floral. It's very light, and it's like... I don't even know Lajero in it, so it's not even in my flavor profile. I got it for free. I've had it in there for six months. I had to make some room for the Cohibas I got to go in there, so I took it out and I smoked it. It's okay cigar. Okay, I would definitely, if I had to pick, even if it was free, I'd definitely going to be picking like a My Father, uh, La Antiquidad or Antiquity. Um, or LGC. Don't get, I mean, this is only like a $5 cigar. Okay, and it's to me, it's one of the greatest cigars ever made. That's why I smoke them every day. Okay, so anyway, Cuban cigars are good when they're done right. They are. There's certain brands that are good. You want to look for the ones with Lajero in them. I like the Cohiba line because it's mainly Lajero leaf in there. The Cohiba Robustos are good. The Talisman was really good. It's going to be really good. I look forward to that thing, getting a little age on it um, and smoking it. Or maybe just climatizing because my, you know, my old man had the box in his... Um, suitcase for about four days before I got them, but I couldn't wait. I was going to smoke it anyway. They're not the best cigars because they come out of Cuba and they're not even worth the price. Okay. Now, $50 a cigar for, you know, $500 for a box of cigars. Is it worth the price? Yeah, it's worth it to me. Okay. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's just one of them things, you know, cigars is kind of like a link between being an everyday working man, you know, and being like rich. It's like kind of like the bridge, you know, you can, you don't have to be a rich guy to enjoy cigars. OK, um, but it kind of makes you feel successful when you sit back, you run your own business and you work your butt off. OK, and you can sit back and enjoy a $50 cigar or a $100 cigar or a $5 cigar. It's all in what is up here, because for me, it's not a social thing. OK, I don't hang out in cigar lounges. I do go to the, the local cigar lounge and I hang out, but it's usually I'm going to meet people there. I'm not going to be social and be like, ooh. Yeah. Matter of fact, I never smoked my Cuban cigars in the lounge anyway, but it's never about, ooh, look what I'm smoking. Oh, why are you smoking that piece of shit cigar? You know, we're so tuned out to all that. It's all about personal preference. And that's what the beauty of cigars is. And listening to a guy like me run his mouth, it's just something to pass the time. Okay. Because, like I said, there are people out there that'll be like, oh, everything that's not Cuban is dirt. And I know people like that. Okay. And I've tried to get them like, smoke, you know, this is better. And they just won't have it. They're bougie. It's just who they are. Whatever. They ain't hurting me none. And they always have Cuban cigars to give me. So, all right. Uh, so when you're first starting off, another thing is you think you feel like you got to go right to the top shelf. Okay. You don't have to go right to the top shelf. You, just because a cigar costs $20 doesn't mean that it's going to taste better than this cigar right here. I'm going to tell you what makes a cigar expensive. Why it's supposed to be expensive. Uh, back in the 90s, early 2000s, there were a lot of cigars with fancy bands that were just like Perdomo seconds, they were buying bulk in factory and having them boxed. I don't know if that goes on today or not. Hmm. You gotta forgive me, I've gotta smoke this thing. 
Um, what makes a cigar expensive is usually the leaf choice. Okay. And so if there's a, let's take the Connecticut Habano uh, wrapper leaf. Okay. It's not in big supply. Okay. So it's going to be expensive. The Connecticut shade wrapper is not in big supply. So it's expensive. Okay. If you take aged, to say you got some uh, uh, Criollo, Criollo leaf that's been aged for five years, it's going to be more expensive than the tobacco that, that has been aged for one year. Okay. So that is going to determine normally the price of a cigar and then, you know, the quality control that goes into it. You know, if, if you're going to buy an expensive box of cigars, I've said it before, you want every cigar in that box to be the same experience. Okay, you want every cigar to be the same color. You want it to smell the same. You want it to taste the same. You want it to feel the same. You don't want one to have good burn and one to have bad. You want them all to be good, so they got to inspect them. It takes a little bit more time. Time is money. The product that you're smoking. Now, just because that's that, that leaf may be five years old and that wrapper may be 10 years old, aged in bourbon barrels, that's another thing that makes it more expensive. doesn't mean it's going to be good. You may not like it. There's a lot of cigars out there. I'm not a fan of the... I had a Perdomo... Uh, anniversary, 20, was it 25th, I think it was, last week. It had the bourbon barrel. I didn't like it. I just didn't care for it. It wasn't a bad cigar. I ain't going to knock it. just wasn't to my taste. So there you go. That's what's going to make a cigar expensive um, as you delve into. It's kind of like getting a wine that's a 2003 versus one that was bottled two years ago. Okay? Well, there you go. Mm. What else do I got here? I got some notes here. Here's one that I just found out. I think maybe 20 years. I thought that if I was smoking a cigar and it had a nice, thick, white ash, really, really white ash, that that meant that I had the best top quality primings of the tobacco plant. It was just like when all the gods and the cigar gods get together and fall upon this cigar and it makes it perfect when you have that really white ash. I read that somewhere. I didn't make it up. Okay, I think it was in a book. The Art of Cigar Smoking that I bought probably in 1996, but I just found out that there, it, while you are smoking a good cigar and while you are smoking quality tobaccos, really what that white, white ash means is that the cigar you're smoking comes out of the Dominican Republic. Go figure that. You know, and I've, you know, I've done that to people like, oh man, that looks like a good cigar. Smells good. Look at that white ash. Oh, that's a good sign. People are like, oh, what does that mean? So I go in to tell them what I read somewhere and turns out I'm wrong. What causes that really, really white ash? Science, bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the mineral inside the leaf that does that. And science dictates that the leaf that comes out of Nicaraguan soil is going to have a whiter ash. So boom. I always wondered that too, because I used to always talk crap about my Cuban cigars because there was a long time there. That's all I smoked because that's all I had access to living overseas. And I always be like, yeah, I just never get this white ash. It's like a white grayish. It's always like a darker white. Sometimes it would get a little white, but man, it's a like gray. And that's just because of the soil in Cuba. So there you go. If you've heard that one, I don't know. But if you hear it, I'm sure you will hear it. It just means that it's coming out of Dominican Republic most likely. So... Here's one. I was sitting in the cigar shop the other night. You know, I met some fellas up there, and there was a guy um, that uh, uh, I just ran into before I seen him. I invited him over, said he was by himself. And uh, we all go in the humidor and we get our cigars and sit down. And what was I smoking that night? I got that chisel from LFD. Great cigar, man. The double arrow chisel. If you haven't tried that one, try it. It's great. Um, but he got a Perdomo. I can't remember which one. It was a big one, though. Nice Connecticut wrapper. Uh, but he was feeling it was real soft. I mean, it was real soft. And he was like, oh, man, this one's really fresh. And I stopped. And, and I don't like to be that guy. It's like, oh, you know, I ain't going to call you out and enjoy your cigar. But I said, let me look at it. So I grabbed it. The thing felt like it had no weight to it. It was very spongy. And I said, hey, look, man, take this back up to the counter and show this to the guy and tell him you want to get another cigar. And he was like, why? I said, because, you know, it doesn't mean that it's fresh. This thing is like underpacked. You know, it's probably going to burn hot and fast and uneven. It's just a, it's just a bad one. So if you, in my opinion is you should smoke it if you want to, but I would just go get another one. Find one that's a little bit more dense, you know. So he did. Came, and and, the, and the, the guy at the counter, the tobacconist, uh, the local brick and mortars here was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Put it in the bag. No problem changing them out. And that's true, too, if you've got a good... Uh, tobacconist and you, you you know say you walk out of the humidor and you you 
buy your cigars and you notice that one of the wrappers coming undone. A lot of, they're either going to glue it back for you or they're going to exchange it for you. They want your repeat business. If you ever get one that's plugged and you can't smoke it, stop smoking it. Stop smoking it. Let it go out. If they know you there, they know that you ain't no piece of shit. You're just going to come in there and rip them off. They're going to be like, you know, hey, man, this one's plugged. You know, and I don't like, they'll say, oh, try to sell you a, a perfect draw tool. I mean, I don't like doing that. I just paid $15, $10, $6, whatever it is, hard-earned money. I don't want to fight with it. Give me one that works. Okay, you fight with it. Oh, there you go. What else? What do we got next? Well, that about wraps it up. Um, that's about all I had off the top of my head. I just, you know, I didn't have no review to do tonight. Um, I already did one and uploaded it. I hope you guys check it out. It was that um, High Clare Castle by Foundation. And I wanted to come out and smoke a cigar. Kind of cold outside, so I figured I'd do it right here in the studio and enjoy this cigar. So I need to shut up so I can actually smoke it. But uh, the, one of the most important things is no matter what you hear from me, okay, and no matter what you hear from anybody, I don't care. Uh, you know what? Let me just digress a little bit. There was a guy, I can't remember his name, it was an article, pretty famous. You might have heard about it. He was a cigar roller. I don't remember his name, but big in the industry. He made the comment that the wrapper on the cigar did not dictate the flavor. Okay, it was just a dress, you know, made made the girl more pretty. Okay, and let me tell you something, I ain't no expert, but that can't be further from the truth in, in my humble opinion. Because I'll tell you what, you go out and get you a uh, Tatuaje uh, Nueva Vista Hibaro. Okay, they left an eighth of an inch or so, quarter of an inch unwrapped. So you got nothing but filler binder and then eighth of an inch and the wrapper kicks in. Light that thing up and smoke it and tell me the flavor don't change and smooth out and get sweeter when that wrapper hits. So wrapper definitely does play a role in the cigar's flavor. I don't know what the percentages is. I'd probably say about 40% if you had to ask me. It does mellow it out and give it a sweetness. So and case in point, if you smoke the uh, Wavel, the LGC Wavel Maduro, and then you smoke the LGC Wavel Natural, same blends, everything's the same. It's just the wrapper's different, different flavor profiles. Okay. So anyway, going back to what I started off with, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what anybody says. Cigar smoking is about what you like. Okay. So if you're happy smoking. A $2 bundled stick, well, then you do that. You don't let nobody tell you don't feel like you're less of a person or less knowledgeable. Or the, I hear people all the time, well, I'm new. I'm new. That don't mean nothing. Every, I'm new, okay? 22 years, yeah, I've been around. I know a thing or two about a thing or two, but I ain't no expert, okay? And just because I think this is one of the best cigars doesn't mean it's going to fit your, fla your flavor profile. And just because, you know, whether you think I'm dumb or not, I'm dumb enough to go spend $500 on 10 cigars or I'm able to and you're not doesn't mean that your whole cigar smoking experience is going to be ruined because you can't get your hands on these expensive cigars or you can't afford them or you're just smart enough not to waste your money on something you're going to part. You know what I'm saying? So it's all personal preference. Do what you want. Enjoy it how you want. Um, and just hopefully, you know, this is a little bit entertainment for you. It does give you a little bit, uh, some, uh, uh, arsenal, some weaponry. So when you are sitting down, you know, if you're a guy like me that likes to talk and get involved in debates and all that crap, uh, yeah, I could be in an airport over here, a conversation and just work myself into it. Next thing you know, we're going at it. It's what we do. So, and another thing is, you know, uh, Studies have shown that part of our survival instinct as human beings, okay, is to blend in with our surroundings, okay? And I think I've touched on this before. So the more you know, the better you can, like, fit in. I know people are like, oh, I don't need to fit in nowhere. Well, good on you, bro. Good. I mean, I'm proud of you. Um, if that were true, you wouldn't feel the need to say it. I'm just going to put that out there. But I don't want to, you know, when I first started smoking cigars, I was real nervous about going. I was a young guy, you know, I'm 21, 22 years old. And I look, see, I still, I'm 42 now, but look how I still look like I'm 18, right? 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 Okay. So it was always that stigma of the young guy, and I really didn't want to be considered the young buck. So I immersed myself, get all this information. Next thing you know, I'm this walking, talking encyclopedia. And you know, people saw through that too. Like, still, you chooch, think you know everything. You've been smoking cigars for like six months. But hey, man, it is what it is. So hopefully you get some enjoyment out of this. You get some entertainment. And there is a little bit of knowledge cloaked in there. But ultimately, man, it's all up to what your taste dictate. So I'm going to stop now. I'm going to smoke my cigar. Y'all have a good evening. 
Always carry a sharp knife because you never know when someone might have cheesecake. And I'm out. <laughs>